What's going on guys, Andrew Pellick Hockey here back with another video and today we're going to continue the daily NHL trade rumors, it's for December 13th today and this is also from Spectres Hockey so make sure you go and click the link down below to go and read more from Spectres Hockey if you want some more insight. There's some stuff in here that I'm probably not going to be talking about because we've talked about it before but if you listen to my podcast last night which is the newest thing I wanted to update you guys on is I now have a podcast that I'll be posting on my channel. And maybe I'll eventually get it on podcasting sites, but for now it's on YouTube. The first one was about over, just over 30 minutes, I think it was 32 minutes. So if you want to check that out, that's on the channel. I've been trying to post as much as possible, multiple times per day, three, almost three videos per day. I'm, tr I'm really going to try to do that. So let's just get into these trade rumors. If you want to check all that stuff out, make sure to do it. And there's some links in the description box if you want to check those out as well. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was the St. Louis Blues, and that's definitely something that I talked about on the podcast last night. But there's been some more updates, and Spectres Hockey did a good job of collecting the uh, legitimate sources again as well, So and he always does that, so make sure to go check that out. But the you know buzz around the last little bit was that you know Alex Petrangelo could be a guy that could be available. Now, Nick Kiprios was the one that said that, and it was just basically them saying, okay, it could be a fit, uh, there could be a fit there if the Leafs were going after uh, him, it, it would just make sense, the Leafs are looking for a defenseman, but Elliot Freeman guesses that the Blues may have put Petrangelo in the discussions when William Nylander was still unsigned, which would mean the Blues would get, uh, you know, William Nylander and sign him to a contract, and then the Leafs would get Petrangelo for this year and next year, and then hopefully sign him to an extension. Now, what's being said here is that one reason the Leafs probably would have passed is because they weren't sure if he would sign an extension with them and uh, stay on long term. And the Leafs obviously decided to keep William Nylander and sign him to a deal, which is something they always wanted to do first anyways. So that's the reason why Petrangelo's name might have been out in the rumor mill that there could have been, you know, a potential deal there only if they were getting back an absolute steal of somebody back. Well, I, I can't even say an absolute steal, but a young player that they can sign to a long-term con contract and that's the thing I was trying to tell people was that when you have to when you're getting something good you have to give up something good as well like both teams want the value and for St. Louis they definitely wanted a big piece and I discussed this on the podcast as well so if you want to check that out so the next thing this is the reason why I wanted to talk to about the Blues was mainly because Pierre Lebrun and a bunch of other people yesterday I think it was Jeremy Rutherford I talked again that's something else I talked about on the podcast he's been covering the team for a while but Lebrun picked it up as well was that around the league there's word that Doug Armstrong the Blues general manager was kind of open minded to listening to offers for a lot of their players now this doesn't mean everybody was available like some of the reports were saying. It was just sort of the, okay, give me an offer for a lot of guys. And apparently, uh, Vladimir Tarasenko was a guy that they were listening on. A couple GMs said that they believe that Tarasenko is available for at least suggestions for trades. Now, um, there is also saying, LeBron, uh, LeBron said on here that the Blues captain, obviously Petrangelo, has a no-trade clause. And there's no indication that he's un unhappy in St. Louis. But uh, still, all bets are off uh, regarding the Blues' core players as Armstrong considers possible uh, roster shakeups. But um, then LeBron's colleague Jeremy Rutherford dismissed uh, a rumor that said that the Blues had informed teams that all players are available. So that's the thing. LeBron was saying that he figured that there could be, you know, everybody is available and that GMs thought Tarasenko was available. Um, but... Uh, Jeremy Rutherford basically said that the Blues had informed teams that all players, uh, including Ver Vladimir Tarasenko, were up open for discussion just to talk about. And that he's basically just listening to anything. But to my knowledge, th this is what, um, this is what De Jeremy Rutherford said as well. Uh, the Blues have not called teams, basically openly saying, okay, listen what are you going to offer for Tarasenko or Petrangelo? They haven't made those calls. They're willing to take the calls, but they haven't actually put them on the market like that. So uh, basically some clubs are under the impression that Armstrong would consider trading anyone. He would consider it, uh, and that would include Tarasenko. Uh, but there's also some sense here that the St. Louis Blues would want to hold on to some of their young guys. Uh, Darren Dreger basically said on uh, NBCSN, um, 
that his sense from talking to managers around the uh, and National Hockey League is that Armstrong isn't willing to part with any of his young core. So that would probably include Colton Pareko as well, maybe Robbie Fabry. Uh, he sees guys like Jaden Swartz as part of their future as well. So he's unwilling to basically talk about the guys that he wants to have for a long time that are young and controllable. So uh, a Spectre's note here is basically what I was saying and I, and I totally agree with it. It was that Armstrong may be listening to offers, but he's not just going to force a trade and make something happen if he doesn't want to. Like he doesn't have to make a trade here. I tried to discuss this as well on my podcast. The St. Louis Blues still next season can be competitive. They just made a lot of big moves. They got Ryan O'Reilly in the offseason. They signed Perron, they signed Bozak. They've invested a lot of money. They don't have a ton of cap space right now. It's under a million dollars. They'll have about 19 to 22, depending on how much the cap goes up, probably around 22 or 23 million dollars in cap space. So they still can sign some of their RFAs and UFAs. Keep the guys they have. Maybe make a couple minor moves for guys that are UFAs like Patrick Maroon if they continue to struggle and upgrade in a couple areas and go for it. If they're not good by the deadline next season, then that's when you probably have to make some moves. So basically, right now, I would imagine they're listening, but they're not going to force anything. The next thing I want to talk about, and probably the, the last thing I'll talk about, just based off the fact that a lot of this stuff is repetitive from what I was talking about a couple days ago, we'll update it probably tomorrow, just so that way it gives it a couple days. But the Philadelphia Flyers are looking to upgrade between the pipes. They're looking for a goaltender. And Elliot Freeman reports that the Detroit Red Wings have made it clear that they want a first-round pick for uh, goaltender Jimmy Howard. So uh, that's quite a bit, but Howard is having a decent season. So the Spectres known in here uh, says that he doesn't think the Wings are serious about moving Howard and that uh, he played a big role basically turning this team at least around to being a, a pretty resp uh, responsible and decent team so far this season. Uh, they probably won't get back into the playoffs, that's my guess, but the fact that Howard has played good enough to at least consider them as a chance to be able to make the playoffs, there might be a short-term contract extension there, and we've talked about this in another video. The Detroit Red Wings might be open to keeping him for another couple of years. He is a good goaltender, but another note here too is is people were saying, okay, Howard seems like not worth like he's not worth a first round pick. But uh, the Spectres note here is something that I also mentioned in a video and the podcast was that Tom Tatar got the Red Wings a first, second, and third. I believe that was like the three picks. So Howard could probably fetch them a decent amount, probably not three picks because Tatar had a bit of control uh, with his contracts, and of course he's now a hab, he's on the Montreal Canadiens, but don't rule out the fact that Howard could fetch that. If teams are desperate for a goaltender, I don't know if Philly's willing to pay that price, but we could see that. Another quick thing maybe I'll just say real quick is that Elliot Friedman wonders if the Blackhawks or Kings will consider trading their starting goaltenders, Corey Crawford and Jonathan Quick. I don't know if that would make sense. There's a lot of numbers in here that we have to go through, uh, but we'll talk about this if the rumors start to pick up a little bit. This was just a suggestion from Elliot Friedman. So again, let me know what you guys think about this video. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. Love to have more hockey conversations with you. Join the squad. Let's get to 4,000 subscribers. Thank you to all the new subs for coming in. My goal for this year was to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. If you want to help that out, uh, I'd really appreciate that. Make sure to click the notification bell so you're notified for all my video streams and podcasts whenever they're uploaded here on the Andrew Pillick Hockey YouTube channel. So yeah, leave your comments down below. Keep it PG, everybody. You don't have to be all crazy in the comments section. I, I have to delete some comments that are just out of this world, people freaking out for no reason. Just, you know, get along in the comments. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Peace.